Oceana Group is the largest fishing company in Southern Africa. We are bringing it home. Mm -hmm. It did acquire a business in the USA called Daybreak. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago. So I think we know it locally. It's Cape based and it has the inshore and onshore fishing licenses and total uh, allowable catch quotas. But a couple of years ago, it went and bought Daybreak, which is a business based on the southern coast of America. And it fishes something called Manhattan fish, which in the Gulf of Mexico, which is a very oily fish. And it's done well there. The timing of the purchase was good, and the business there was a good one to buy. Market cap, 15.5 billion rand, a PE of 16.4, and a dividend yield here of just over 4%. Again, let's just start with the share price graph. I think we'll use this as a, a formula for the day. Mm. And uh, we're seeing a, a pretty flat performance. Uh, flat, but with while. an upward um. tendency. Francois Kittel and his team, I think, have done well. Can and you see uh, an upward tendency on that graph? Yeah, well, it starts <laughs> yes. on the bottom on the left, don't you think, and goes higher towards the right? Yeah. On the five-year view. All right, yeah, a little yeah, bit I'll of choppy action. I'll give it to you. On the no. last year, it's going a bit nowhere. And some choppy action there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Joseph. It's a steady performer. I, I think I'll agree with Paul. I used to like it, especially in the 1990s, 2000s, when it was at HSBC. I just believe it's a defensive, nice, quality um, stock. It didn't do well last year from a share perspective. Uh, it almost flat, produced about 2.5% um, for the entire year. And surprisingly, the JSC this m uh, month was about, uh, or in January, it's not this month, 4% up and it was basically negative, possibly mm -hmm. one of the few shares that were, were negative. But the sales are good. The sales are good yeah. and people are going to continue yeah. to eat yeah. fish. Yep, yeah. and the inshore fish, which is what they call pelagic fish, I think. Not sure if I've got pelagic that right. Fish. Maybe the pelagic are the ones today. that are deep. Anyway. The oily fish, like the mackerel and the pilchards, are what go into their Lucky Star brand, which is very, very strong. It's a very, very popular brand, and it's in all of the supermarkets. That's been great. And then the deep sea stuff, of course, is the hake. That's the white fish that goes into prepared meals. So you put it all together. There's another thing we always refer to with Daybreak, the U.S. thing, is that they make omega fish oils from that oily mm -hmm. fish. I do want to point out, though, that fish is very expensive, comparatively speaking. Yep. Mm. and it only seems to be getting more expensive. In, in general, it has the feeling of an industry that's in terminal decline because literally the fish are running out. It's a yes. finite supply. Yeah. It is a finite supply, yeah. Overfishing is a global you know, problem. So what do, we, what do we say here? Given demand supply and the fact that the industry, as you say, Paul, is in terminal decline, or if, if basically there's a, uh, you know, um, a massive demand and possibly uh, from a supply perspective there are constraints because of the overfishing. Certainly they're going to be increasing their prices to be able to maintain the margin. But so will the, people their buy? Margin is they, about I mean, surely people are price sensitive. At, at some stage you're not going to eat fish anymore. Look, I gave a bit of a, a negative review there. I think I'm going to get email from Francho Kittle this afternoon. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's it, the, the Environment and fisheries department in this country is very careful about the amount of catch that is allowed. The inshore pilchards and mackerel are not at risk. There's plenty of that. Yeah. They also do lots of anchovy, lots of squid. They are the largest player in the hake industry because of consolidation in the industry. They do a good job. The deep sea trawlers work well. Irvin and Johnson, which is part of AVI, their competitor. So I don't think there's an absolute I think you've done concern. enough now not to get a, a harsh email. And they have <laughs> been very operationally careful, and I think they'll continue to do well. Remember, Tiger Brands owns 40% of this company. They probably won't take it any higher because in order to get the total allowable catch, you have to be seen to be like, uh, you know, not owned by some mm. faceless corporation. Mm. Are you happy? Yes, I'm I will, leading I still up towards wanted to saying say I like though, this from Because Joseph <laughs> made the point on demand supply and that obviously, you know, with limited supply, you have pricing, clarified yeah. that statement, pricing mm. will increase. And, and there is a point where people won't buy fish because you would rather default to a cheaper protein. Well, certainly, but I mean, once in a while, like your Fridays, you have to go and buy fish. <laughs> and so, so you so have from Fridays from at <laughs> home. And <laughs> Easter Friday time fish. in the Cape, people eat fish, you know. I think it is a cultural yeah. thing. It's bigger there than it is in Gauteng. Hot or not? It'll be hot. Hmm. Hot, Paul? Excellent, yes. I think the company deserves the thumbs up, and I think they'll defend the margins in their space. I'm going to go hot too.